Hello everyone and welcome to Dots and Nature's tutorial playlist of how to draw flowers. Here we like everything dotty so I will be showing you how to create pointillism illustrations. There is a new flower tutorial every week on this channel and this week's flower that we are going to be drawing is Enchanter's Nightshade. So as you can see on the iPad here, here is the reference image that I am going to be using today. So it's always very important if you do want to do this completely on your own to have a reference image and have it always by the side of you in easy view as a guide. So like I've explained, I work in the style of pointillism. So the mediums that I do like to use are fine liners. These, I find, are the best way to get the pointillism to work its best. And purely because I like to create black and white illustrations as well, so these are very ideal for that. So in today's tutorial, and if you want to follow this completely step by step as how I draw these flowers, you will need a pencil. I just use a HB pencil because we're going to be using this to create the pencil outline. I use a 0.2 fine liner, so as you can see there, and this one I use for adding all the pointillism, so this is a finer pen to add all the detail. I also use the 0.5 fine liner. This one is mainly used to just for the outline of the illustration. So this will go over the pencil outline that we create and this kind of tidies everything up. And then I also do use a 0.3 fine liner. And this one is normally for um, outlining the more intricate and finer details because we don't want as thick of a line. Now it's totally up to you what sort of size fine liners you would like to use. Um, like I just said with the 0.5 that is a thicker and one and I do use this for outline so if you don't want a, a thick outline and you want it to be a thinner line then you can use a thinner fine liner it's totally your choice depending on how you'd like it to look so the first step to this is that we'll need the pencil and what we're going to start off is is creating a sort of guide for us to follow and then we're also going to roughly draw out this with the pencil, um, just so that this gives us a sort of guide to go by. So looking at this reference image that we have here, as you can see, this is a very sort of tall flower that we will be following, and it doesn't just consist of one um, overall flower. So like, for example, if you were drawing a poppy or a daisy or a rose, you could kind of just focus on the one flower itself, but this sort of plant contains more than just one flower, so it buds, buds multiple flowers. So, just looking at this reference image now, what I'm kind of going to do is start by adding this central um, stem branch here. So if we just add that... And like I've mentioned, this is going to be a very sort of rough pencil sketch. So at this stage, it's not going to look perfect and it doesn't need to look perfect either. And now I'm going to kind of do this in sections. So from looking at this, I can break it down. We've got this section here. Then we kind of got this section here. Then we're going to do this one, this one, and then the bottom one. So you've got one, two, three, four, and five different sections. And we're going to obviously put this on our pencil sketch too. This way it kind of gets a more accurate depiction of what we are looking at. And it kind of helps us as a guide also as well. And by doing this in pencil, we get to obviously rub this out afterwards as well, because we will be using fine liners. So rubbing all the pencil sketch away, it doesn't matter how messy you are with your lines or how many scribbles we put down, all of that will be rubbed out at the end and it's not included in the final illustration. So 
just add in a sort of where you feel it will come out and then we've got this one here that kind of sticks out so a rough sort of circle there and the one that sticks out and as you can So now that we've got our rough outline here, um, our guide is where we need to now add all the petals. Now, in again, using the pencil, this is where we will add more of the detail. And again, this stage is rough as well, so it doesn't have to be completely accurate. If it means you need to take more than one line to keep on going over to get it correct, that is totally fine. Um, I do that myself. It doesn't necessarily always come out as perfect at the beginning. So yeah, now we're going to be adding all the pencils. So we start at the top here. So I think what will be best is to start on both edges. So we'll start at this one here and we'll start at this one here and this one here. So now that we've got the both edges pointing for this little part here, it makes it a little bit easier to add all these little more intricate ones in the center now. So I'm just gonna speed this a little bit up just while I fill in all of this. And when I explain the next stage, I'll, exp I'll start again for you. So that's the first uh, pencil outline that we've just done and as you can see um, I've just done the top half so far and probably from watching me do that you could see that it wasn't a case of like completely just doing one straight line and being that's what we need. I My lines are very rough, I've probably gone over it a couple of times and that's probably the best way to do it because you're not going to get it as accurate as you want it the first time. And as you can see, they are literally just outlines. So there's no detail I haven't added where areas are darker. I, I haven't added all these little kind of fine hairs yet, because that's something we'll add with the fine liners instead. That's where all the detail, detail gets added. So I'm going to continue to do the same as I did with this top half. So I've got my guides ready. So here I'll be working on this one and so on and so forth. Um, I will tune in again to explain a bit better how to draw the petals because obviously the flowers are going to be a little different to the buds. Now the buds at the moment are a little easier to do um, because a lot of their shapes are pretty similar and they're a lot easier to follow. So I'll explain a bit more um, to add a bit more guides when we do come to draw in the flowers. So what I'm doing with here as well, because as you can see, there's these little sort of like rounded areas. So with it, wherever there's sort of um, elements in a flower with their shapes, and a lot of the time in every sort of object, you will kind of find shapes or add in a shape will make it kind of easier for you to draw it out. So I am literally just kind of drawing rough little circles here. Um, 
just to make it a little easier to follow and then kind of using this guide to know how far to go out. Now with these flowers also, so the buds of these, um, I've not really done them as sort of to like copy in the scale exactly, but you can kind of judge it yourself from looking at the reference image of how large you can go with it. And like I've explained before in this video, by having these guides, it sort of helps you to kind of not go so large or not go too little um, with the sort of the flowers. So it is keeping it kind of all in the same scale and same frame size as well. So you won't have sections of it looking a little too odd, like it's a little too large and then other areas looking too small. And also like sometimes, because although we've added a rough outline here, as you can see now, I will need to actually go outside of our outline. So just because I've said that we have created this sort of outline, don't don't actually limit yourself to just being in that outline. If you feel it it doesn't add up or you do need to kind of slightly go out of it, that's totally fine. Because like I've said, it's there as a rough guide. So you're not breaking any rules. It's not going to ruin your final drawing. If that needs to be, then it needs to be. Because as you can see from this now, that looks a bit more accurate. If I had crammed it in this area here, then it wouldn't have looked um, the same as what we're referencing here. So just to let you guys know with that one. So I'm going to speed this process up again, finish off adding all the buds, and then we'll move on to the flowers. Okay, so that's all the buds added in. So now we're on this section here. So this is the first part of where we're drawing the petals. Now, what I could do, because I've kind of just done a kind of area grid, is I can now perhaps have, add, looking at where obviously these are, so it kind of goes the flower underneath kind of goes like this. And it gets very close. To there and then this one sort of is more elongated so we can keep it to that sort of grid there okay so what I would do with this one is work on the forefront flower so the one that's in front and then we've got this one that's behind so if we put this one first because we know that's the one that's the full image of the flower so we can include all the petals which is obviously this one behind is sort of you're only seeing parts of it so we'll draw this one out first I've already got the stem part here So there's that one done. Now we can work on the one in the background because now we know where this front one is situated. So I'm going to do these sort of little petals that are poking out here because I feel if I do that first, that kind of helps to position the rest of it.
that's that bit added in so that's that those two flowers and so for the rest of them like we're gonna do the same as we did here so as we get to it you can kind of sort of judge the flower petals and even if you want to kind of make it easier again for yourselves because like I've explained doing the guides is always very sort of helpful for you so you could break it down again so you could kind of there's a petal there there's a petal there then that one comes out there then that one comes out there and then you've got that sort of center bit okay because you don't really need to do the bit in the background of it because if you've got this sort of center then you can do that part second so always do the forefront uh, flower first and then do the ones behind second so don't kind of do it just because this part is obviously the first bit that you'll see of it if you're going to draw it out this way don't kind of draw it as you go along kind of judge it by how you see in the reference image this way it makes it a lot easier because it's always easier to fill in the gaps of what's behind when you've got the forefront bit done first so like I've just shown you here so if you want to add more little guides to make it easier to draw out the flower petals you can do so and you can do the same like with this one here Okay, so now we have finished our pencil sketch. Um, so we have it roughly drawn out. So the next step that I tend to do now is I use the 0.5 fine liner. And this is what we're gonna use to literally go over exactly what we've done, but to create smooth fine lines. So all we're doing next now is creating the outline of this flower illustration. Now it's totally up to you depending on your own personal style or what sort of mediums you prefer to work in. So you don't have to use fine liner if that's not what you work in. Um, or if you are joining this video to follow exactly how I do draw, then obviously you can use the fine liner and follow that step. Um, but whatever medium yet yeah, you prefer to work in, you can do this step which is just going over the outline. So I'll speed this process up because it's literally just going over what we've already drawn and then I will tune back in when we're working on the detail. Okay, so I've just finished the outline with the fine liner pen. So as you can see now, what this has done is created a more accurate drawing of our illustration. So we're doing simple one lines to create the final look. So what we now can do is just use a rubber and we can rub out all the pencil sketches because as you can see, you still have our little guidelines, our extra markings and we don't need these anymore. So just to make it a bit easier when we add in the detail as well, get rid of all of this, and then we can work on the next step. Okay, so I've got our reference image back up. We've just got our outline down on the paper now. So the next step that I'm gonna show you in this video is the pointillism. So my style is that I work in pointillism to add all the detail to whatever I draw. Um, so if that's something that you do wanna learn throughout these videos, 
then you can include and continue to this step. Or if you just wanted to learn how to draw it, um, the flower, so that you get to this stage, and then you want to add uh, elements or details in your own style, then that's fair enough. You don't have to do this step. Um, or if you were to use a completely different medium as well, you don't necessarily need to follow this step. So it's going to be the pointillism that we do next. To do the pointillism, I use a 0.2 fine liner pen. So this is what we'll be using to add all the dots. And what I use as a guide, and the reason for the pointillism element is to um, distinguish where the darker and the lighter areas are of the flower. So as you can see here on this flower, the, this is a lot darker here. So when there's a lot of a darker area, that's where more dots will be added to create a lot of a darker area. And then, for example, if we use the flower petals, these are very light, so there'd only be a few um, little dots. So hardly any dots, really, just to emphasise that that's more of a lighter area. And another thing that I use the dots for as well, so sometimes when you do have flowers in the petals, you'll have sort of lines. So I use like dots in a line to kind of emphasize the pattern on the petals too. So wherever there's patterns, you can kind of follow that with the dots as well. Um, also with the 0.2 fine liner as well, we're gonna add all the details of where you can see here, this is a very sort of hairy plant. So all these fine little hairs, we'll use this liner to add all those details too. So this step will take a lot longer, and especially if you are new to pointillism as well, a heads up, it is very time consuming. So this step will take a lot longer than what the video may portray, because I will have to speed it up just so that we get to see the final look of the illustration too. So being in mind, like I just said, we're gonna work on this area, starting from the top and working down again. And what you'll see throughout this video then is how I add dots to the darker area and still adding dots to the lighter area but there will be less dots. So let's go on to the next step and add all the detail to our flower. So working with these here this is a much darker area so I'll show you solely how I do this and then I'll speed up the rest of the video because this may take some time. So when we have a darker area, as you can see, I'm adding the dots, but in very close proximity to each other. So this is creating a much more darker area because the more dots we add, uh, the darker it gets. So it's a little lighter here. So now we space out the dots and it's a little dark on this side of the circle, so more proximity there. Okay, so we get the idea now that we have to, if the darker area, use more. So you can see from this first one that I've done here now that this is a lot, would be a darker colour and this is a little bit lighter again. Um, so referencing the image that we saw earlier, which I do still have by my side, um, so I'm basically looking at this now, the reference image, to know where that I need to add the darker and lighter areas. So still have that reference image by you. So I'm going to do this exact same what I've done here for the rest. Um, obviously referencing back and forth to the image just so that I do have accurate depictions of where the lighter and dark areas to the flower are and any little individual details that it has also too.
this is what it looks like with all the dot work added so now you can tell that there's slightly darker areas to the flower as well as there's still being lighter areas um, so this also gives us a guide if we wanted to add colour later um, as to where the darker colours and the lighter colours need to go. So the last step for this now is to add the finer detail again. So like I mentioned earlier on this reference image, you can see that it's a very hairy plant. So we've got all these fine little plants. So again, still using the same 0.2 fine liner. I'm just going to quickly add all the little finer details. So that is everything added and that is every step complete. So we now have the final illustration here of the Enchanter's Nightshade. Um, so you can see from the reference image here that we've used to what we've created here. This doesn't have to always be the last step. If you wanted to add colour, you can also add colour to this if you wanted it as the, the coloured version. So I'm just going to hold the camera a little closer for you. So if I zoom in here a little, obviously you can see the detail a lot better now. So with all the dots and a little sort of fine lines as well added for all the hairs. So this is the final look that you should end up with. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you have found it helpful and you were able to create your own version of the Enchanter's Nightshade or even if you followed every single step that I um, showed you guys in this video then you should be able to end up with an illustration looking similar to this one here. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video I will be posting weekly tutorials so a different flower every week showing you from beginning to end how to draw the flower and um, this will be a continuous thing that will be posted every Thursday. So thank you again for watching. Um, if you do like this series and you do want to follow to draw more flowers then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to put the notification bell on too so every time that I do post tutorial drawing you'll be notified. And again, yes, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next tutorial video. Bye.